Today I forked up. By treating my horse like a dog. Technically, my fuck up was last night. Let me start by saying, I rent a beautiful home in the country on 200 acres of land. I have a horse, dog, and three cats. My horse lives in a field in my backyard. Six acres of beautiful grass, hills, a stream, and a huge 20x10 feet stall, all properly fenced. Last week, my horse bruised his foot and was limping. I decided to put up a temporary fence in my yard and keep my lame horse in my backyard where the ground is soft and the grass is greener. He could barely walk so there was really no concern over him escaping. He was beyond overjoyed. Yesterday, I had the farrier come and fix his shoes as he was no longer limping. Here's where the fuck up begins. I loved having my horse in the backyard. It was like having a giant dog hanging out with me. So I figured, what's the harm in one more night? 6 AM, my phone is ringing. It's my landlord. There are 12 state trooper at my house trying to wrangle my horse who is leisurely strolling down the main road. He was fine, they had fun, my horse made friends with a super sweet lady trooper who was giggling the whole time she was walking him back home while he was nuzzling her face. Not nearly the worst of fuck ups but I thought everyone might enjoy something that doesn't involve sex. Teal Deer, treated my horse like a dog for a week while he was injured, only to have him escape when he felt better, causing a closed road and a bunch of state troopers a fun morning playing cowboy. Today I forked up. By paying $15,000 for my $150 electric bill. This happened around 2011. I was paying my business bills using the Wells Fargo online payment system. Back then, the systems were not very sophisticated and somehow, I did not notice the missing decimal point and accidentally sent the electric company $15,000 instead of $150. The very next day, I received the overdraft email notice and quickly realized my mistake. I got on the phone immediately and called my electric company. As usual, dealing with a big corporation, it was a nightmare. I was dealing with two different departments as nobody wanted to deal with my situation. I begged them to return my money ASAP, as I overdrafted my account and needed to pay other bills and business expenses. Unfortunately, they did not care, and I was told that as per their company policy, they have to wait 30 days before sending me the refund. About 30 days later, I have finally received the refund check for $15,000. To my surprise, a couple of days later, I have received a second check for $15,000. It turned out, the company was even more disorganized than I thought and as I was dealing with two departments, they both sent me a $15,000 check. Unsure of what to do, I decided to treat them with their own medicine and deposited both checks. About a week later, I have received a call from the electric company asking me to refund a second check immediately. I have assured the arrogant lady I was dealing with the whole time, that I will be more than happy to refund the $15,000 extra check I received from them, but as per our company policy, I will have to wait 30 days before I can do so. Luckily, the WePay systems are more sophisticated these days to catch these types of errors, and as you can imagine, since then, I always triple check everything when making any kind of online payments. Teal Deer, sent $15,000 instead of $150 for my electric bill. The company told me they have to wait 30 days before issuing a refund. They also made a mistake and sent me two checks for $15,000 each. When they asked for a refund, I told them as per my company policy, they will have to wait 30 days. Today I forked up. By hiding from plumbers. This did, in fact, happen today. I live in an apartment complex and for the past couple of days we have had plumbers come to each apartment to replace radiator valves. No big deal, right? Except that it is. I have crippling social anxiety and having strangers walk around my apartment making small talk is my worst nightmare. I have a friend who lives two stories above me. Yesterday she messaged me to tell me when the plumbers came to her apartment. 
They spent about 20 minutes in each one so after 40 minutes I went out before they came, they had keys to each place so I didn't have to be home, and walked around the neighborhood for an hour just to make sure I wouldn't have to talk to them. I came home, they were gone, things were great. Until today. I'm unemployed and school only starts in a couple weeks so I sleep until noon or even later. I live with my parents but they are on vacation so I'm home alone. I woke up the sound of the apartment door opening and a guy yelling plumbers here, anybody home. I freaked out. I didn't know they were coming again. I hadn't prepared myself. I had no way of getting out. Now, if I was a normal person I would have greeted the plumbers, apologized for not opening the door for them, explained I was asleep, fucking talked to them. But I'm not normal and I panicked because social interaction is terrifying, so I hid under my bed. Yeah, I know I have issues and my therapist will hear all about it next week. They go around the apartment, room by room. There's two of them. One comes into my room and another goes in the guest room which is right next to mine. The one in my room makes a comment about how messy the room is. They laugh and get to work. The guy kneels down next to the radiator, which is next to my bed. I realize I fucked up. He sees me. We make eye contact for a few seconds. I have never seen a man look so confused in my life. Then, after what felt like an eternity, he says good morning. I stutter something about how I can't sleep in the sunlight and it's nice and cool and dark under the bed. The guy just nods, probably thinking I'm insane. I crawl out from under the bed and just walk out of the room without saying anything more. The other guy in the guest room sees me walk past and gives me the most puzzled look. I go to the bathroom, lock the door and sit there for 15 minutes until I hear the plumbers leave. The one who found me knocks on the bathroom door and says have a nice day. They leave the apartment and just as they are closing the front door I can hear the guest room guy go hey where the fuck did she come from and the other one burst out laughing. I just know that every single person they work with has heard of me by now. What the hell is wrong with me and why am I even alive anymore? Teal dear, plumbers came to my apartment, I hid under my bed to avoid talking to them and one of them found me. Today I forked up. By calling one of my employees my love over text. This just happened about 5 minutes ago, so actual today I forked up. I am a manager and I work in a high stress trust and safety department handling pretty difficult situations. I have a team of 4 women and 3 gay men, we are very close knit and I have an awesome relationship with all of them. We get along really well and I do my best to make sure they are happy and productive but I also have to make sure I maintain a certain level of propriety with all them as I am a straight male. Gender politics suck, but I like my job and want to keep it. I also care about my team and would never want to make them uncomfortable or have them feel threatened. Well, I accidentally threw that out the window a few moments ago. One of my employees is named Amanda. My wife's name is also Amanda. Employee Amanda texted me this morning about traffic and how it was going to make her late. No problems. Then, about 5 minutes ago I went to text my wife and started my text with my usual good morning my love and you can guess what actually happened. Fortunately, I am not waiting on a meeting with HR or anything like that. Employee Amanda laughed showed the rest of my team and now I am enduring endless comments of good morning my love. It's gonna be a great day. Teal dear I have an employee named Amanda, and a wife named Amanda. Called the wrong Amanda my love in a text message. Today I forked up. I have the memory of an idiot guildfish. This happened one hour ago and I'm shaking and sweating. I work on a trawler and one of my jobs is changing the crucially important data collecting batteries. They cost about $12,000 and we can't fish without them. So, here we are in the Barents Sea about two days sailing from Norway and we are fishing like normal and me as a fucking absolute useless sack of meat forget putting it in and leave it laying on the trawl and the we put the trawl out and all is good. But 15 minutes later we start pulling again and I start getting those background thoughts you always get but shake it off. 
Oh my holy motherfucking good, I fucking started shaking and hyperventilating everyone was killing me with their eyes. I went up to the skipper right after to apologize and tell him I was going to quit anyways and all he said is good and went down to eat. I will cost the company $1,200 for the battery $100,000 for oil and $1,000 for each crew member. Teal Deer forgot batteries and cost everyone a shitton of money. Today I forked up. By letting my sister go through my phone and find out I'm a sugar baby. My life is in shambles as I write this. So today I forked up big time by letting my sister go through my Twitter DMS. I sell feed pics and nudes without my family's knowledge cuz I'm a broke bitch, and today my conservative Muslim sis found out her sis is an ethot undercover. I usually don't let anyone touch my phone but today I don't know what kind of demon possessed me. She's a total control freak so I should have known better. Now my whole life is about to be changed, not in a good way. I'm scared. Here's a little backstory about my family. Orthodox traditional narcissistic obsessed with me cuz I'm always different doesn't respect personal space will control your and your neighbors life cuz ytf not I'm this type of girl who you'd never think of doing anything like this straight A's feminine hijabi so my sis is in obvious shock I can't find words to describe the situation RN She's gonna tell my narc parents about this and I don't know what to expect. I'll update if I haven't died. Teal dear I'm an ethot and my Muslim sis found that out. Today I forked up. By not knowing what fika is. So I'm currently visiting Stockholm, and in preparation I was reading about the things to do, the things to see and experience in Stockholm. Of course every guide had the cool shops and cafes and restaurants and things of that nature. But in particular, a guide said intriguingly, you can't leave Stockholm without experiencing Fika. This today I forked up. Is probably already obvious to all the Swedes reading this. Me being the thorough reader I am, I skipped over what the actual details of what it is, and made a mental note of it for when I visited, along with every other recommendation of the guide. So the time for the visit to Stockholm rolls around, and today was the first day I had some time to myself and explore around the city. So I decide to walk into a quaint little cafe and suddenly remember this fika thing I need to try. So I walk to the cashier, and ask if they have some fika. She looks at me quizzically, like I made some absurd request, and goes. Yes. I guess. Obviously I should have stopped right there and asked what it actually is but I decided to double down and ask for a fika and some coffee to which she replies and would you like anything to eat with it cake perhaps so I mutter something resembling no pay and sit down with my cup of coffee and decide to google what fika is turns out it's a ritual the art of taking a break with friends or colleagues over some coffee and cake and turns out you can't experience it alone, as that'd just be eating coffee and cake. Cringing so hard right now while writing this from that very table, and making an exit plan that doesn't involve me making any sort of eye contact with the cashier. Teal dear, today I forked up. By not knowing fika is the Swedish art of taking a break with friends, not a cake-like dish meant to be eaten, resulting in a very cringy encounter with the Swedish cashier. Today I forked up. Making my friends spend $800 on Clash of Clans. This actually happened years ago. But I just can't forget about it. My friend, he's Turkish, and I were 10 to 11 year olds and playing Clash of Clans on his iPad every single day. And we always wanted to have unlimited gems and were actively looking for hacks on the web. One day we were in his room looking around in the shop of gems and he accidentally clicked on the $5 deal. And you guess it? He received the gems. We were stoked and I told him to click on the $100 deal thinking we had a glitch in the game. So he did and it worked. I told him he should do it as many times before it wouldn't work no more and he did as I said. After the second time getting the $100 deal for free he said I don't feel good about this, 
what if I'm spending my parents their money but I being the good friend shut him down and told him that's impossible and he should abuse the glitch more. So after having him glitch the $100 deal 8 times in total we decided to spend it all. We upgraded everything happily and even though he was still a little worried we just continued the day and ate pizza at his house. Three days later he comes to me all panicking that his mom was her mail or something and she got a notice from her bank that she had to pay $800. It appeared his mom had linked her credit card with the iPad to buy something and forgot to tell my friend. After a lot of discussions apparently they decided to call Supercell and after one week of mailing and exchanging information they got back the 800%. I was relieved when I heard about it, but sometimes I still feel like a dick about it. Teal Deer made my friends spend $800 on Clash of Clans thinking we had found a glitch in the game.